Welcome to the Student Housing Insight Podcast, where we are putting you in touch with the people who bring student housing to life. I'm your host, Wesley Dees, and joining me today is special guest and our Director of Marketing, Kristen Hahn. Woo! Do we have an applause track? I'm totally kidding. I will put that in. You can emphasize the word special and special. That <laughs> Well, hey, thanks for um, taking some time out of the work day to <laughs> chat a little bit, but um, you're new to the position. You've just been here for a couple of weeks, and I just personally want to tell you thank you so much for everything that Aww. you've done because, one, it's made my job so much easier, and on top of that, you've just, just the, the talent that you're bringing to to what you're helping us out with graphic design and especially our social media. Um, <laughs> it, it is just, uh, it's been amazing to see and it's literally just been a couple of weeks. So thank you so much. Well, it's fun to do. So thanks for letting me do it. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you guys who may not know Kristen, Kristen is uh, grown up in this industry, started out on site when you were in college and uh, worked for Cardinal, Cardinal Group as a traveling leasing person and <laughs> I don't get all the titles everybody's got different titles Everybody travel different leasing person titles acronyms all of it but yeah I was a traveling leasing manager with Cardinal Group for a little bit and now I'm doing this got to do a couple of cool things with NAA and yeah yeah you were actually a uh, what 30 under 30 close <laughs> 20, 20 in their 20s 20 in their 20s. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, a little bit more exclusive than the 30 <laughs> under 30. Right. Because <laughs> so, there's only 20 of these, not 30. But, yep. Well, um, again, thanks so much for joining us, number one, and, and seeing the mission behind uh, what we've been trying to do. And I know you've embraced that fully. It, it, it has certainly come through in the work that you've put out just here in, the, in a short period of time. So I appreciate that quite a bit. But we, of course, I've got an interview with Rich Kelly from Studio Houses and Business Magazine that we're going to start um, with talking about LeaseCon, which is coming up September 18th in Dallas, Texas. Some great things about that that I want to make sure everybody's aware of. But I wanted to bring you in beforehand, A, to introduce, and then also just talk a little bit about, you know, we've got the Student Housing Insight community that Greta created and we've put out into the world this past spring. And it's growing with a lot of popularity and we want to encourage everybody to go out. And if you haven't signed up yet, make sure that regardless if you're um, a student housing professional that's working with an operator or if you're uh, on the supply side, either with a service or a product that's specific for student housing, Go there and register. You just go to the top right hand corner, and I, I remembered it was on the right hand this time. <laughs> Last episode, okay. I told everybody it was on the left and was quickly <laughs> told by Greta, no, it's on the right. But in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a member login at studenthouseninsight.com and just click on that and then click on sign up and go through the put in your name and that information, and then you're in. And ta da! And we've got some, you know, even before you joined us, you, you were doing the question of the week oh, yeah. that I think has got everybody on uh, Thursdays that I think, you know, gets everybody kind of riled up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I appreciate you continuing to do that. And then we've, uh, we've also got something I wanted you to spend a little bit of time talking about that we've done this past week, and that's announcing our ambassadors for the 2019. 2020 school season, so or academic calendar, I guess we should say. Um, so, a little bit about that and, and that program. Is it something that we plan on doing year after year? And then, yeah, tell us a little bit about our ambassadors for this year. Yeah, so the SHI Community Ambassador Program is going to be an annual thing. So, if you didn't make it this year, no worries. We did get a ton of applications. So, we definitely appreciate that, but continue to apply whenever you see the application pop up. But for this year, we have five dedicated student housing professionals who have really worked hard in this industry to 
make it better. And that's kind of our ultimate goal. They have these awesome ideas to help student housing. They're just really fantastic people. We've got all different positions from a leasing manager to director of sales and marketing. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with SHI. So with, with that being explained, let's uh, let's announce to the podcast world, in case they haven't kept up with social media, <laughs> let, let's announce to the audience who those 2019-20 ambassadors are. Yeah, so first up, we have Chelsea Arnett. She is with Landmark Properties. And she, Go, Chelsea. Yeah, she's their assistant manager of sales and marketing. So woo-woo. Then next up, we've got Consuelo Esters, and she is a fantastic team member of Pinnacle. Pinnacle. Pinnacle Campus Living. Campus Living. And then next up, we have Sean Kettle, and he is a team member of the Asset Living team. And... Next up, we have Willem Nichols. He goes by Will, though, FYI. And he is Director of Sales and Marketing at Preferred Apartment Communities. And last but not least, and she's actually been a member of the SHI community for quite some time, is Daphne Rutledge. And she is the new Development Property Manager with Peak Campus. Yeah, I actually, I actually have worked with Daphne. She's uh, she was at a property that I was doing some consulting services on, and I want to brag on Daphne for just a second because, yeah, when she when she came to to work at that property, that was her her first entree into student housing, and she has just grown leaps and bounds. She moved to the West Coast to take a position to to grow there, and um, just recently joined Peak and. Yeah, now she's going to be in the in the new development property manager seat. So just thrilled about what's going on with her and and all of those ambassadors and the things that we're going to be able to work on together, you know, over this year and and bring a lot of great content and value to to the student housing industry. Absolutely. And another cool fact, at least with Waco and Charlotte, we're going to have a couple of ambassadors present. So nice. people can meet our ambassadors. <laughs> Well, and that's and that's one thing. I mean, let's talk about ambassadors for a little bit. And so, that if you want to join next year, and some things that are involved, you went you know over a couple of those. But that's the other thing, as far as if if you want to get to our regional summits that we've been doing as an ambassador, that's completely free to you. Right. <laughs> so all you got to do is make sure that you get there. So. Uh, I'm really psyched about about those guys coming on board and being able to work with them this this year. So, um, and what is you know what I believe it's going to be able to do for their career as well, because just like our community ambassadors and our resident ambassadors and all that on uh, you know at the property level, this really is something to kind of help you get some exposure to things that's going to help you boost your career down the down the road. So, super excited for them. Well, the other thing that we need to talk about as we're talking about the community and I wanted you to come in and talk to everybody about is a special contest that we're doing with the wonderful folks at Stellar. If you haven't, if you don't know anything about Stellar, go to wearestellardesigns.com. But, you know, essentially what and this is a part of South Park Interiors, who's also a sponsor with us for our, for our summits. And it is just a perfect kind of brainchild of, of expanding for for South Park Interiors. South Park Interiors has been doing interior design for student housing, both new construction and renovations for a long time. And then. Let, let me let me kind of explain for everybody <laughs> the how Stellar was born because I love this story and you know how I love stories so so yeah have you ever had that when you've gone on a leasing tour with a prospect and you go into the model and it's beautifully decorated and they're like oh I love that bedspread where did you get it where did you get that pillow where did you get that painting on the wall or whatever it is right and maybe you know maybe it was something that came from home goods or tj maxx or something and then you know and then in a lot of situations it's oh well we had this done by an interior designer and let me see if i can find out where they got it from or whatever and 
the folks at, at South Park Interiors said, yeah, maybe this is a business model. Maybe we can start offering this to the to the residents. And so that's that's what Stellar, that's how Stellar came about. And then on top of that, they've been able to see a lot of success because so many things with Stellar are just prepackaged that a lot of the apartment operators were calling in saying, hey, we love what you, you know, we love our model. We love what you guys have been able to do. We don't necessarily think it's worth you guys coming out here and redesigning our model, but could we send you some pictures and you tell us what to do, right? And so they've kind of created this whole B2B part of Stellar as well so that if you just want a refresh of your model, they're able to do that. So as you and I were thinking about this contest, we said, you know, what would be really cool to give something away would be. So Stellar is going to be giving away a refresh box. So what that entails is $250 worth of all the coolest accessories for a model. So the companies that participate, which I'll get to what our contest actually is here in a second, (laughs) but for the companies that participate, they do have a chance to win that $250 refresh box. And I have to say there are some pretty freaking cool things in it. So tell us about the contest. Yeah. So it is the great team spirit challenge. And basically what it is, it's a, was that, was that, was that that teen spirit or team? team? Team. Team, like your site team. Yes, absolutely. So the great team spirit challenge. (laughs) And what it's comprised of is a week of five different tasks. And it doesn't matter which communities participate in these tasks, but it's for property management companies to kind of prove that they've got the most team spirit. And if there's one thing that we know... You're putting the challenge out. To the management companies, not the individual yes. properties, mm-hmm. but the management companies. The management companies, yes. So we are calling you out in a nice way, of course. Um, but it's basically to prove that they're the best. And if there's one thing we know in student housing, it's that people are very passionate about their company. So what I love about this is you don't have to be a top 25 to participate in it because it's not like these five challenges or, you know, that it requires an entire department right. of marketing people to put it together. Exactly. And, and so this is, yeah, this is a way for a property management company to, to really shine and, and tell Student Housing Insight what they're in, in their audience what they're all about. So uh, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I am too. And some of the challenges, I have a feeling they're going to be very entertaining. I know they will be. <laughs> <laughs> I know they will be because, uh, you know, it, you can't be in this in this industry and not be entertaining. So. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> anyway, how does somebody get more information about being a part of it? Because obviously they need to be part of this HI community. Yeah, they can do that. Also, everything will be posted to Instagram. There's going to be a link in our bio directly for the challenge. So it's a super short survey. It's literally what your company is, your name and position, and your Instagram handle. And entering is as easy as that. So if you're interested, definitely look on Instagram or LinkedIn or the SHI community to participate. Perfect. I'm super excited about it. I thanks so much for putting that together and working with with Stellar to to come up with it. I'm super excited about not just the fact that we're working with Stellar on it, but also <laughs> I just can't wait to see what what these companies end up coming up with. So mm-hmm. so yeah, you guys definitely get in touch with Student Housing Insight community and become a member so that you can get information on that and and keep up with everything that's coming out on Instagram get your company signed up so well great well so i want to go ahead and move on to the to the interview that i had with rich kelly uh from student housing business magazine and and france media so those of you who are not aware of what student housing business magazine is uh, make sure that you subscribe go google it and (laughs) make sure that you fill out their subscription form and and get a a free copy of that uh comes out 
typically every two months. Uh, but that that's a, actually owned by its parent company, France Media, which is based in Atlanta. And they put on a lot of different real estate magazines, but also they put out a lot of real estate conferences as well through their conferencing arm of the company, which is called Interface. And so you guys, have, if you listen to the show, you've heard us talk about Interface Student Housing Conference that's done in, in Austin each April. And that's been going on for a while. But last year, uh, Student Housing Business and Interface launched LeaseCon specifically for the student housing industry. And it's really focused on the leasing and marketing aspects of what we're doing uh, within our industry. And I think that's so important because we've really been at the cutting edge for multifamily and conventional apartments. And, and that side of our bigger industry of, hey, this, these are the things that are coming down the pipe, right? This is, and not just from a technology standpoint, but, you know, this is, this is the way this upcoming generation needs to be sold to, spoke to, how they need to be respected, how, you know, the, the types of things that they're going to like from an amenity standpoint, what they're going to expect from a services standpoint. So I, I really feel like this conference is, is not only something that's going to be very beneficial to, uh, to those that are at the, at the site level and the support role uh, within student housing operations, but even kind of on a bigger thing, I think it's, I think it's really a great conference to have for, you know, even an outsider to kind of look at and see and see, hey, what is it the college students are, are really thinking about? So excited about that. Well, let's go ahead and get into that interview and we'll have a couple of takeaways. Rich, welcome back to the podcast. Wes, thanks for having me. Good to be here. Well, thanks for taking the time out to be here, and thanks for everything that yourself and student housing business and Interface is doing for, for the industry. I think the last time I saw you, well, we had a meeting in Charlotte back in May, but prior to that, it was it was the Interface Student Housing Conference in Austin back in April. And, uh, you know, once again, <laughs> you guys have pulled off just an incredible conference with that. It's really the premier conference for the industry, and it proved to be that once again. And I know we're talking about LeaseCon today, but just while we've got everybody here, what were some of your uh, takeaways from Interface that you want to share with everybody? Well, uh, first of all, thanks for the kind words about the event. It's uh, it's a lot of work to put on, but it's also a lot of fun. And it uh, when it, when you see it all culminate and and come to fruition those those few days in, in April, it's uh, it's pretty you know pretty amazing to to see it all unfold. The main thing I took from this year's event was the fact that the industry is performing well and it's performing uh, in a mature and you know kind of normal status quo kind of fashion which you know some might say well that's not very newsworthy or that's not very interesting but i think it is because this is still a relatively new space and a relatively new industry and we've had some interesting ups and downs over the last five six seven eight years mostly all ups frankly but now I think we've reached a point where, you know, things are just kind of performing well and that, and that everybody is kind of doing their job in their, whatever part of the industry they're in. And it's created a, a very stable and solid and uh, well-performing space uh, in the commercial real estate world. So uh, I think that is significant. And I think it's certainly good news for everyone in the industry. And it shows that, you know, the industry can, is capable of you know, self-regulating and, and performing well at all times. Uh, and I think that in turn attracts a lot of the new and the foreign capital that continue to look at the space. And that is, again, one of the things I did take out of interface student housing is just the amount of new and foreign capital that's continuing to look to student housing and want to come into the space and view it as a, you know, all of a sudden a, a very normal and regular part of the commercial real estate world. Whereas, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago, that might not have been true. One other thing that, that came to my mind is public-private partnerships on the on-campus side of things. For many years, I think P3s were, you know, the companies that were the P3 developers and, and even the advisors out there were kind of pushing the rock uphill, if you will. And then maybe a year or so ago, they reached the top of the mountain and the rock was, you know, steady on top of the mountain. And now I think they're going downhill. The rock is, is rolling downhill and you're seeing more and more colleges and universities look to P3s for a variety of reasons. And you see, interestingly, more student housing companies uh, that were 
they were formerly all off-campus folks getting into the on-campus world. So I think it's it's good news because I think P3s generally deliver good results for the colleges and universities. They improve the housing stock on their campuses, and it also provides uh, a lot of good work and good business for the companies that are involved as the developers and contractors of those projects. So I'd say those were kind of the, some of the main takeaways I took from, uh, from Interface in, in April. Yeah, I think yeah, a couple things that that stood out to me. Of course, this was the you know this was the first year. Uh, there was only one public REIT th- that was there. You know, with obviously with with EDR selling to to Graystar, so ACC was was the only. You know, it didn't. I don't think it felt any different, but it was just something that uh, you know I thought of going into it that hey, this is I, I don't know when the last time you know interface or even some of the other you know NMHCs I guess the oldest conference in the in the group of annual conferences for student housing and I I, I think this is the first time that there's only been one. Uh, but the other thing that there were some operators there that were uh, you know not from the U.S., which I thought was great. So uh, let's let's move away from from interface for a second and start talking about you know what's coming up in September, which is now the the second annual. This is the second year that you guys have done it. Last year was the inaugural, obviously, but the LeaseCon event for student housing. And it's coming up on September 18th in Dallas, at the Weston Galleria. Uh, what does the student housing insight audience need to know about this conference? The student housing insight audience should know that this event is really right up their alley uh, and for them. Uh, we are aiming to bring together kind of all constituents on the leasing and marketing side of student housing. So those are people at the corporate office. Those are hopefully we get people you know from the field, uh, on-site people. And then certainly there are uh, a lot of folks uh, who are either, you know, consultants, marketers, agencies to help in who, or vendors of various kinds who help in that process. And we really want to bring them all together under one roof on September 18th in Dallas and also on the 17th for our roundtables and cocktail reception and really delve into the issues that they're all grappling with and trying to figure out and trying to perform better in to continue to lease more beds and, and to have higher occupancy and, and higher rates for that matter. So that's who we're really trying to, to bring together. We did do the event last year for the first time. It was a great success. We're hoping certainly to build on that this year. I took a lot of time to go back and read the surveys from last year's event and really took a lot of that to heart. One of the things that came up was a desire on the on the behalf of the attendees who responded to our survey, our surveys to have more owners and operators talk. Yeah. Kind of fewer vendors, more owner operators. And I think that was good advice. And we're going to try to heed that advice and have a lot of the top 25 owners and managers in the business represented on our panels and as presenters I think, I think there's certainly a balance where you want to have, you know, we certainly want to hear from consultants and vendors as well. But uh, at the end of the day, it's the owners and the operators who are the people that own the properties and have to lease those beds and will either fail or succeed based on how they do. Hopefully, of course, succeed. So ultimately, this event needs to benefit them and we need to hear from them as well as have them in the audience. So that's our goal is to really make sure we integrate a lot more owners and operators into both the content from a speaking standpoint and also the content that they will hear when they sit in the audience. Great. I, you know, it's this is one of those conferences that, that, you know, at least from a marketing and leasing standpoint, but I think even it, it certainly flows over to some of the other topics within operations. But you guys really have some topics that, that gets into the into the weeds of, of marketing and leasing. And, and the other crazy thing that hap- <laughs> happens with student housing or, or has occurred with student housing yeah, I, I remember very early in my career, you know, leasing before Thanksgiving just didn't make any sense. Like no one was thinking about that. There was even times when, at best, what you may send out before Thanksgiving was, you know, something for for renewals. But now, it's something that's happening pretty much the day of move in. And on, on top of that, it's it's one of those things where you can't really focus on, well, hey, what did we learn last year before you get into the turn season? So everything with with LeaseCon is kind of perfect timing with it being right in the middle of September. I think you guys did move it up a week from when it was last year, which I think works even you know better for for those needing to attend but really to put things in, into practice and, and and I say that because I really you know I really try to encourage companies 
that this is kind of the perfect conference to send multiple attendees to because you can step away from that conference and immediately have a, a post-conference discussion to really strategize and figure out what you're taking away from that meeting and what you took away from the other operators in the space and how that's going to affect or, or how that should impact your marketing strategy for this upcoming year. So I know last year, you know, when attending that there were certainly companies that had multiple attendees. If, if a company's looking at sending a group, do you, do you guys offer any group discounts or anything uh, to help? We definitely, that? we definitely do. Yeah. It's, um, it's a situation where if a company wants to send four or more people and those people can be, you know, from the corporate office, from the field, from a combination of both, then we offer a special discounted rate. And it's a pretty good discount, too, because we really want to, as you said, Wes, encourage that. We want to encourage companies to not just send one person or two people, but to send, send uh, as many as they can, because a lot of people are, are integrated in the leasing and marketing process. It's not just one person that dictates everything. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of people carrying, more importantly, carrying it out and making it happen on site or, you know, getting that message out across through their organization. So we want ideally as many groups as we can to have, you know, three, four, five, six, even seven or eight attendees. And we will certainly incentivize them to try and help and do that. The other thing is that I, I think this event it, through the content, it, it appeals to a lot of different and it, it can educate a lot of different people in an organization. Um, you know, just real quick, a couple of the content things are going to be, you know, what's the right mix of social, digital, and traditional marketing to get heads in beds. Uh, we're going to talk about branding and how that can really turbocharge a marketing campaign and help generate leases, whether it's a brand for just the property or if it's an overall brand within a, within a larger owner operator. Uh, we're going to talk about Snapchat and Instagram. Uh, we're going to talk about reviews and reputation management. That was a panel that was very highly reviewed last year. We're going to talk about SEO versus paid, uh, how to build a so social media sales machine with micro-influencers and a stellar leasing team. This is an important one, how to convince owners and operators to allocate budget to social media <laughs> and digital marketing. And of course, how to then report and validate the results and maximize conversions to make it all worthwhile. Exactly. Um, we're also going to talk about the importance of you know even just a, a property website, how it all kind of starts with that. Uh, we're going to try to talk a little bit about how to market and reach Generation Z, who is the you know the student cohort now and for the next you know five to ten years. Um, and then you know one session that we also covered in April at Interface, and we're going to do here again is how to find, market, and lease to international students because they are such a key component for many properties and at so many schools and universities, and not just you know not just the flagships, but really colleges and universities across the country. We're also <laughs> going to have some some more you know solo presenters, if you will, and uh, I think it'll really be a nice blend. I was going to say, that was actually the panel that I was on at, exactly. Interfa at Interface. Yeah, that was great. I mean, it, it was the last panel of the day, but it was it was completely packed out. So I think uh, I think you're right on that. It's it's certainly the uh, it's, it's certainly the right event to, to be talking about that topic for sure. So great. So uh, let's talk a little bit about speakers and presenters. I noticed you've got Willie Butler this year. Willie is no stranger to, to our audience uh, after his presentation at our Florida Summit, where he just really got folks motivated. Uh, he also has his book, Releasing, coming out later this month, so I know that's kind of perfect timing uh, with this being on September 18th. But who are some of the other presenters lined up this year as well? Well, as I, as I said earlier, uh, we are making a real effort to get even more owners and operators involved. So we're going to have folks like uh, Ron Didwitty, Rob Dinwiddy from Landmark, uh, Jake German from Redstone Residential, Ryan Sunling and Tiffany Alsa from Cardinal Group, uh, Ashley Poyer and Maria Filippone from Peak Campus, Alex Abernathy from Asset Living, uh, Kyle Bach from Annex Group, uh, Willie Butler, as you said, uh, Lindsey Brown from Campus Advantage, and then certainly a few more of the, our kind of top 25 owners and managers will be represented as well. And then, of course, certainly a lot of the consultants and agencies who do such great work in this space. So again, I think we're going to try to have a, a nice blend, and I look forward to seeing how it kind of comes together with, with both sides being represented. Great. Those are those are definitely names that, if you've been in the student housing industry, 
you certainly become familiar with. Yeah, you know, these aren't these aren't C-suite guys that are kind of hearing everything from a fifty thousand foot level. These are the guys that are in the weeds and figuring it out. So you know, perfect perfect lineup for that. Yeah, they're the folks that are really making you know making it happen, and and, and you know nobody can kind of tell it like it is the good, the bad, or the ugly than 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 that kind of that kind of person. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, the the exhibit hall at Interface, you know, was was fantastic this this past April. Uh, I know last year you were kind of doing a little bit of a exhibit area outside of the the main ballroom that that we were in. Uh, this year, what can people expect as far as meeting with vendors and sponsors of the event? It'll be similar west to last year. Um, we don't have a big formal exhibit hall the way we do in Austin. Maybe that's something we look at a year or two down the road. But for now, it's more uh, of like a tabletop exhibit setup. We have everything set up around where the food and the coffee are, as well as where the networking cocktail reception is. And I think it, it kind of creates a little more of a relaxed atmosphere where people can just kind of, you know, have multiple opportunities to just during the day and the half of the event, just regularly kind of run into and have a chance to, to talk to folks at their tables rather than having, you know, formal exhibit hall hours and things like that. So we got pretty good feedback on how, how it worked last year. And, and I think it'll work well again this year. Well, oh, great, great. So uh, for those, and I always ask you this question and, and I'm betting the answer is going to be the same, but you know, for those listeners that are, that are planning to attend the conference, what, what suggestions would you give, to them to make sure that they've got a positive ROI, you know, from, from not just the investment of their, of their money, but their time as well. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, one of the simple things, of course, is you look at the agenda ahead of time, see what the sessions are, what what are the ones you really, really want to be at and can't miss. Uh, look at who's speaking, maybe even reach out to them ahead of time. It's not that hard through either, you know, LinkedIn or just, you know, doing a little web search or you might already have their contact info for that matter. And uh, maybe get in touch with them, see if you can set up a meeting with them before their session or right after their session. Um so I mean, those are those are the basic things, and and again, I think just coming with coming with a, a good attitude of you know knowing that you're going to hear a lot of information, you need to decipher what works and what's most important for you, and that you'll you'll meet a lot of people and and hopefully um, you know come across and make you know three four five new relationships that can hopefully really benefit you and your organization. Great. So. Last question, where can the listeners go to get more info and to and to register for the event? Simplest thing is just go to interfaceconferencegroup.com, which is, you know, I N T E R F A C E conferencegroup.com. It lists all the different events that France Media and Interface have going on and then just click on LeaseCon uh, and once you get to the conference website, you'll see tabs for everything from the agenda, speakers, venue, Regist- uh, sponsors and exhibitors, registration, everything you'll need is on that conference website. Short of that, always happy to field calls myself. Uh, you can just you know look me up, Rich Kelly, Student Housing Business, uh, 914-468-0818. I'm always here and more than happy to talk about our events with anybody or answer any questions. And we really look forward to welcoming uh, you and, and hopefully all of your SHI audience or a lot of your SHI audience to uh, to Dallas in September. We're looking forward to it, and this is uh, especially you know myself and and my team. It's something like I said, opening this up. I really appreciate everything you guys are doing for the industry. Um, this conference, in particular, I think is one that the industry has needed for a long time. So, uh, really, just encourage everybody to uh, to obviously support it and, and attend, and uh, you know also make sure to give uh, to give Rich. <laughs> The takeaways that you have, because I think this is something that uh, you know, it's still in its it's still in its infancy, but I think this has got the chance to be a really powerful conference for our industry. So, looking forward to uh, to seeing that happen. Well, thanks, Wes. I appreciate the opportunity to be on with you today, and and I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, one of the other things we took away from the surveys was uh, some some testimonials and comments from last year's attendees, and I would say the the kind of overriding theme was, you know, finally a conference that revolved around marketing and digital marketing specifically. It's such a key factor in student housing and, you know, everyone out there needs more information and resources on how to best focus their efforts and, and, and accomplish things uh, and always be moving in the right direction. Cause it's, you know, it's a confusing, it's, it's not an easy A to B to C 
space. I mean, there's a lot of different elements and, and things that go into the leasing and marketing. And uh, I think people really appreciated the chance to hear what the trends and changes that are going on are and hear from some folks that could really give them some, some good feedback and thoughts. So we are aiming to do the same this year and looking forward to uh, hopefully an even better and better and, uh, and improved lease con in year two. Perfect. We will see you in September. And thanks again for your time today. Thank you, Wes. Appreciate it. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, everything coming up with, with LeaseCon. I know that there's been, even since I had that conversation with, with Rich, there's even been more speakers that have been announced. Uh, Michael Newton with Swarm, who was uh, there last year. He's also spoke at one of our summits. He's going to be there, as well as uh, Sam Wynn from Agency 53. And so uh, really excited about about hearing those panels and uh, and really talking to um, talking to everybody and find out you know what's on their mind going into this next marketing season. So, but since we're on the subject of conferences, let's talk about our summits for a moment because we've got we've got two summits that are coming up. I do and one of those, which is fast approaching on September tenth, is in Waco, Texas. Waco, Texas. I'm so excited for this <laughs> one. You know, ten years ago, if somebody told me Waco. Texas, I would have been like, we're going to hang out right. with the Branch Davidians or what's, <laughs> you know, what's going on. And then uh, through just kind of going through town and, and having a client there as well, uh, <laughs> I started spending a lot of time in Waco and realized how much there is to do there and just really kind of how cool, you know, the town is. But the biggest thing was there's, um, when you're talking about colleges in, in Texas, you think of Austin. You think of College Station, think of Denton, Texas, San Antonio, Huntsville, Nacogdoches, Mm -hmm. um, all these places. And we really wanted to focus in on Oklahoma and Texas for this region. And Waco just made so much sense. And, you know, I think it it provides a a great kind of getaway. Um, Obviously, Baylor University is there and and we'll have some folks from uh, from the university that will be there as well. And it's just a cool little town that has gotten a lot of attention lately because of Chip and Joanna Gaines. Chip and Joanna. <laughs> P.S. If you're listening, hi. We need to be best friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did put a, a LinkedIn message out to, to Chip and I are actually connected on LinkedIn. <laughs> no, you are not. Okay, Wes, who are you not connected with? Well, it, uh, anyway, I was I was <laughs> pleasantly pleased when he accepted my my invite, but he's yet to respond to my to my request to come speak. <laughs> But we've got another great Waco native, uh, actually several Waco natives that are going to be, that this has just been announced, that are actually going to be on one of the panels. And that's actually Waco Tours, which they're providing our our activity. Um, They've created a whole company based off of really just showing off their hometown. Of course, they go to all the fixer-upper homes, and and that's going to be part of the tour if if you come and, and elect to do that after the after the summit on the 10th but what was so really cool and i can't wait to sit down and talk to them about this is they've got just a a culture and a a team spirit about them that is just so unique and and it's something that i feel like our industry can really learn from so we're actually doing kind of a fireside chat with their with their founders and their uh, director of business development on you know what's what's played into that how were they able to achieve that and and it's a it's a fireside chat of really just being able to sit down and learn something from someone outside of our industry that I feel like we can apply to our teams and, and our companies. And so super excited about that. Yeah. And, uh, and David Ridley, who is, is one of the founders, actually both of the founders had their house done by Chip and Joanna Gaines in the first, in the first, uh, excuse me, I believe it was the second season. So um, there is a little bit of a tie in yes. okay, <laughs> the so fixer maybe upper. Through- then we can get Chip and Joanna to come out. Maybe. I think. But yeah, you make a really good point about their culture as well. That's something that's extremely evident, even through social media, website, all of that before you even talk to them in person. 
So yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited. And then again, we've got um, we've got our, our last one for 2019, which is going to be October 1st in Charlotte. It's our Southeast Conference. So if you're in the markets anywhere from Georgia to Virginia, so that's Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, in case Tennessee, yeah, and then Eastern Tennessee. We're pretty much saying if you're in Tennessee and you're in the Eastern time zone, <laughs> this one's for you. Yeah. Come <laughs> if on you're now. in Central, we'll, we're working on something for 2020 for you, <laughs> but you're free to come either way. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that's uh, we're kind of just going with the with the tom zone as far as delineating what is eastern tennessee so but that summit is going to be back in the in the location of our original summit that we did last october which is at the u.s national whitewater center <laughs> in charlotte north carolina it's just uh it's it's like a 10 minute yeah skip from uh from the airport um and, and just provides a great central location for for all four of the five of those states yeah it is fine. for for all five of those states and uh you know it's um and it's gorgeous yeah you know, it's a great venue uh and the biggest thing that i like about it is <laughs> we get to do some really fun stuff no boring hotel ballrooms in in relationship to that and then of course as with all of our summits it's got a great activity you know planned with it and as you can imagine one of those activities is whitewater rafting (laughs) so yes last year we actually because we originally planned it in september and we were going to have whitewater rafting the hurricane screwed things up Mm -hmm. we had to push it off until october 23rd they don't do rafting typically after october 1st and so this year <laughs> we're doing it on October 1st. And so even if you don't like white water rafting, there's zip lining, there's rock climbing, there's bike trails, all kinds of cool things that you can do. And, and so that's kind of the second part of the, of the first day uh, after we get through, you know, six hours of learning and diving in deep into stuff. Then we have an opportunity to go out for, um, for two or three hours and, and have some real fun and, and uh, looking forward to that. So if you want more information on that, Kristen, where can they get it at? So you can go to studenthousinginsight.com and up at the top, click on events and you'll see upcoming events. If you click on that, you'll be able to see both conferences. Perfect. I, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing so many folks there, and, and and I know there's a lot of folks that went last year uh, to Charlotte that are planning on returning, and, and and they're bringing friends with them. So if you haven't registered yet, space is limited. Make sure that, you know, th- there's a reason that we don't go out and get the thousand person seat ballrooms at a hotel mm-hmm. <laughs> because we want this to have you know an intimate feeling to it to where you know people are, are comfortable talking with each other and having conversations with peers that are in our industry and you know talk about the things that keep us up at night and talk about the things that we're uh, we're struggling with and talking about the things that we're winning with and so that, that can help inspire other people so so really looking forward to that and I hope that if you're in one of those regions or even if you're outside of one of those regions that you'll attend even people in central time zones even if you're in central time zones <laughs> yes and, and and western time zone we've got we've got yeah. folks coming from in Pacific Arizona and California for uh, for the uh, for the Waco ah, uh, for the one in, in Waco so yeah fantastic and we will be announcing soon our summits for 2020 Woo! and when I say soon it will probably be a little bit <laughs> before 2020 <laughs> before 2020 <laughs> for sure but we we are actively working through that and excited about what 2020 is going to bring so yeah anything else Kristen I think you did a great job at covering everything. Well, Kristen, thanks again. Thanks again for all the things that you're doing uh, for us, both with the SHI community and, and our social media and just looking forward to all the cool things you're putting together for everybody. It's a great opportunity. I enjoy it. Thanks so much, Wes. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>